Okay, in lesson one, we're going to talk briefly about something you learned about in grade 10, which is right angle triangles and uh, how sine, cos, tan, and the other trigonometric functions relate to this. This also calls back on a lot of knowledge from our previous unit, so it should feel pretty familiar. Um, so let's go through it as quick as we can here. All right, so remember our unit circle. We got a point on the unit circle, so I'm just going to start with this one right here and draw a line to a point. So there's my radius and on my unit circle it has a radius of 1 and we end up with a point x and y. Alright so if you remember from what we talked about before sine and cos are just those coordinates. So when I go a certain degree around, so we'll just put an angle here, so let's say I travel that distance, that uh, amount of rotation, what sine and cos are are the coordinates given that angle. So cos of theta would be the x coordinate on the unit circle and sine of theta would be the y coordinate on that on that unit circle. So what we can do is we can actually extend this down. I'm going to make this into a right angle triangle. So that means the lengths on each side, this side here, the x side, which is how far you travel horizontally, would equal cos theta. And this side here, how far you traveled vertically, y would equal sine theta. Now, what we're trying to do here is relate how we solve a right angle triangle to coordinates on the unit circle. We're kind of joining those two together. All right, so what if we, like that's great, we can use that to solve for a, a triangle that only has a radius of one, but obviously we're gonna deal with triangles of much bigger and smaller sizes. So let's just think about a bigger one for now, because it's the same concept to a smaller one. What if I go beyond that circle, right? And what if, oops, sorry, my line's not very good. Bear with me here, you know. All right, there we go. There's a right angle triangle. Now I got some coordinate way out here, some x and y coordinate off of my unit circle. So now my radius, I'm just going to write r, could be any number. We don't know what it is, right? It's much longer than one or somewhat longer than one. Well, the sides of this triangle have just been multiplied or factored or scaled larger by a size, by a factor of r. So what that means is this side of the triangle, x, the length of this side of the triangle, is r times cos theta. And this side here would be y equals r times sine theta. So we could solve for the missing sides of the triangle using that. And same with this point up here. This point up here, we could now label, instead of calling it x and y, we could actually find its coordinates by going r cos theta and r sine theta. So what we're doing is we're taking what we learned before and we're thinking about it more in terms of just a triangle. Okay, so I'm going to redraw that triangle that we just talked about above, uh, except I'm going to re now remove the unit circle from it. So this is going to be kind of our starting triangle. So r is our radius, and we just said that x would be r times cos theta. That would give us this length. And this side would be y equals r sine theta. That would be this length. And there's the angle we're talking about. Now, obviously, there's another angle up in the top corner. Um, so if we switch it around and solve for this angle up here, these two would switch sides. But let's just focus on the angle here right now. Okay, so what I want to do is let's set up our six trig ratios again. We did this before the break, so it should sound pretty familiar, but I'm going to set them up using these functions. So let me start with this one here. I'm going to go over to the side and just do a little bit of rough work over here at the side. X equals our cos theta. Okay, so I want to isolate cos. So that's obviously pretty easy. If we divide both sides by r, right, the r's cancel out here, and I'm just going to flip it around and go cos theta equals x over r. So if I want to solve for the angle, and I have these two sides, I could take the x side, take the r side, divide them, and take the cos inverse. So I'm just going to go down here and write in the ratio for cos is x divided by the radius. Well, what about sine? Same thing, right? y equals r sine theta. So if we divide both sides by r, we can isolate sine, and I'm just going to flip it around here, put the sine on this side. Sine equals y divided by r. Sine equals y divided by the radius. Okay, so there's our first two. Sine is the y coordinate, or the length of y divided by the radius, and cos is x divided by r. The final one is tan. So if you remember, the definition of tan, tan is just sine divided by cos. Well, we just defined what sine and cos are. So sine, we just said, is x divided by r. And we're going to divide that by cos, which is, oops, sine is y divided by r. My bad. Okay, 
y divided by r, there we go, and cos is x divided by r of the radius. Now, if we take the reciprocal and multiply, the r's are going to cancel out, cancel, cancel, and we're left with y divided by x. So that's what tan is, y divided by x. Okay, now if you remember our reciprocal functions, cosecant, secant, cotangent, those are just the reciprocals of the ones above. So all I need to do to find cosecant is just flip it, r divided by y. All I need to find cos is just flip it, x divided, oops, r divided by x, let me fix that, r divided by x, and cotangent is just the reciprocal of tan, which is x divided by y. All right, so that's how we can set up our six Tri, uh, primary trig ratios. We're not even solving right now. We just want to figure out where everything goes and define them, okay? So take a good look at these. Sine, cos, tan, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Now that's one way of doing it. The other popular way of doing it is using SOHCAHTOA. SOHCAHTOA is the exact same thing that's on the other side here. So some of you maybe are more familiar with this method and some of you are more familiar with SOHCAHTOA. There's really no difference between them. SOHCAHTOA, instead of just calling them X, Y, R, and that, uh, is just using different names. So what we're going to do is, here's our angle again, and you can use whatever way you're more comfortable with. And as we go through the homework, you know, you, you, you can decide what you like the best. But you got to know how to set up these ratios. All right, so hypoten... Oh, boy. Use. All right, hypotenuse. <laughs> the bottom side, or the side that's next to the angle you're solving for more appropriately, is called the adjacent, because it is adjacent to the angle you're looking for and the side across from it we call the opposite. All right, so what is SOHCAHTOA? Well, the SO, S-O-H, comes from sine is opposite divided by hypotenuse. So that would mean, I'll just write that down here, opposite over hypotenuse. Now, if you compare it to the triangle on the other side, you can see the opposite side, right, is the Y. So your Y. The hypotenuse is the R, so it's the same thing. Uh, cos is ka. So cos is for adjacent, I'm just gonna write ADJ for short, over hypotenuse for short. So adjacent over hypotenuse. And finally, tan, which is, oops, toa. Where's my undo button there? There we go, toa. So tan is opposite divided by adjacent. So SOHCAHTOA is just a way to memorize what's on the other side. And some people prefer to use this method, some people for, prefer to use the other method. So just like I drew over here, that would be the adjacent. Okay, so you can pick one way or the other, whatever you're comfortable with, and get used to it. It's okay if you like to use SOHCAHTOA for triangles, it really doesn't matter. Um, okay, so what about our reciprocal functions? Well, that is just flipping these. Hypotenuse over opposite, hypotenuse, over adjacent, and uh, cotangent is just adjacent over opposite. So it's either labeling them x, y, and r, or opposite, or sorry, adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse. It's really the same thing. All right, so let's move on with some examples of what I want you to be able to do. Today. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is let's find the six trigonometric ratios of the angle theta in the given triangle. So pay attention to where theta is because depending on the corner that theta is, we'll switch which side your x and y are or same thing, which side your adjacent or hypotenuse are. So x is down here. So that would make this the x side or the adjacent side. That means this would be the opposite side or the y side. And this side here would be your r for your radius or if you prefer to call it the hypotenuse, just depending on the method you like to do. All right, so the first thing we can solve for in this uh, is the radius or the hypotenuse. It's missing, we can solve that. We don't need trigonometry to solve that. All we need is Pythagorean theorem. So Pythag theorem. All right, which says x squared plus y squared equals r squared, or adjacent squared plus opposite squared equals hypotenuse squared. All right, so here we go. Square root of five, squared plus two squared equals the radius squared. So let's see what we get. Square root of five squared is gonna be five because root five times root five is square root of 25, which is five. Two squared is four and r squared. So we got nine equals r squared. We take the square root plus or minus the square root of nine equals r. And obviously we ignore the negative because we're talking about a length here. So the negative, we just 
ignore that. So we just need the positive square root of 9, which is 3. So there's our radius. So I'm going to go label that on our diagram there. Okay, now that we have the radius, it's going to be really easy to set up our trig ratios. Here we go. Sine. Well, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, or y over r. So it's going to be 2 over 3. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, or x over r, which is root 5 over 3. And finally, tan. Tan of theta is opposite over adjacent, so 2 over root 5. And if you remember, uh, it's poor form to leave that radical on the bottom, so we're actually going to multiply by root 5 over root 5, and we're going to have 2 root 5 over 5. All right, so there's our primary trig uh, functions, ratios. Let's do the reciprocal ones, which all we got to do is just flip them. Cosecant, which is the reciprocal of sine, is 3 over 2. Uh, secant, which is the reciprocal of cos, is 3 over root 5. And once again, we got a radical on the bottom, so we just need to clean that up, multiply it by 1, which is root 5 over root 5. And we get 3 root 5 over 5. And the final one is cotangent. And it would be easiest here, instead of flipping the final answer, why don't we just flip the original one here? Because watch, if I just flip that one, it will put the radical on top and save me from having to do a bunch of work. Okay, so there's our six primary trig ratios. I'm going to do one more of these examples with you. Okay, one more example. Once again, uh, we're saying we're being told that cos of alpha, so alpha is just going to be an angle, equals 3 over 4. Sketch a right triangle with the acute angle alpha and find the other five trigonometric ratios. All right, so first I'm going to draw a triangle here, and it's not going to be too pretty, but we'll do the best we can here. All right, so here's my triangle. Well, that'll have to do. So there's R, or the hypotenuse. This is X, or also known as the adjacent side. And this side is Y, or the opposite side of my angle, alpha. So we'll just put him down there. Okay, so they gave us uh, cos. They told us cos alpha equals 3 over 4. Well, that means we know that the top number here must be x or r adjacent and the bottom has to be r or the hypotenuse so i already know two things i can go label on my triangle i already know this side must be four and i know this side must be three so just by giving us one of the trig functions we can find two sides of our right angle triangle now we're missing the third side once again we don't need to use trigonometry to find this all we're going to do is pythagorean theorem so I'm going to come down here, go x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Well, I know the x side is 3, and I know the r side, or hypotenuse side, is 4, so let's solve for y. All right, so 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, so I have 16 minus 9. y squared equals 16 minus 9, which is 7, and we're going to take the square root of it, and we're going to ignore the negative because it's a length. Okay, so we got the square root of 7. Let's not write it as a decimal, let's just leave it as that. So I'm going to go over there and label that on my triangle. So now I know all three sides. Once I know all three sides, I can find all three trigonometric ratios. So let's do that right now. Let's start with sine. So sine of alpha is y over r or opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be root 7 over 4. Cos they already gave us, but I'm going to include it in here, so I have the whole set here. 3 over 4 and tan of alpha is opposite over adjacent, so root 7 over 3. Okay, now let's do the inverse functions, or the sorry, the reciprocal functions, not inverse. Uh, reciprocal functions are just the flipped ones, so uh, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, so we just got to flip that and make it 4 over root 7. Once again, we just need a quick tidy up because we got a radical on the bottom, so let's just multiply by root 7 over 7, and we're going to get 4 root 7 over 7. All right, let's do the reciprocal of cos, which is secant alpha. And we just got to flip 3 over 4 and make it 4 over 3. And finally, let's do cotangent, which is the reciprocal of root 7 over 3. So I'm going to make it 3 over root 7. And once more, we just got to tidy it up by multiplying it by root 7 over root 7. 
And there we go. We have 3 root 7 over 7. Okay, so that's the end of today's first skill. What you need to be able to do is find the six trigonometric functions, write out their ratios the same way I did given the information. Okay, so give them a try.